How we doing? Mark with Workaday Custom Gun Leather here. Uh, today we're going to go over pattern making, how I make my patterns uh, similar to some, different from others. Uh, first I start with a gun on a manila folder and I make what I call kind of a fat drawing. I don't want to be real tight against that gun when I'm making that. I want to leave a little space. That'll come into play later. I start off with the slots. I want to figure out where I want that gun to fit on the belt. Uh, so I put that across there. Mark the mag release. You never want to cover the mag release. So I want to leave room for that. And I do that from the start. Now I'm putting in the edge lines. Uh, just the straight edge lines. In the pattern, there's a lot of straight lines. The final holster, those will soften up as you start to bend that leather into the holster you want it to be. I use one inch radiuses around most of my turns. Uh, that just seems to be a good uh, shape for most size guns, medium to large size guns. Uh, that one inch radius around most of the corners uh, seems to be pretty consistent and uh, pretty effective. Now the view we're looking at here, this is actually the inside of the back panel. This is going to be a two-piece uh, holster. Some people call it a pancake. Uh, but I'm going to look at, at this point, the inside of the back panel. Now you notice I'm marking the stitching lines. I'm not going to stitch it on the back panel. I'm eventually going to transfer those to the front panel of this holster. But I'm going to use those uh, as reference. Since the gun is laying flat in this view, that's when I'm going to mark my stitching lines. I'm going to cut all the straight lines, use a straight edge. The more consistent uh, I am with the start of the process, with the pattern making portion, that translates as this gets transferred uh, from time to time, whether it's to the front panel of the pattern or the leather itself. The more consistent you are to start with, the better it's going to end up as you go through the leather making process. You'll notice also on this back panel, both in the drawing and when I cut it, that muzzle end, the muzzle end of the pattern, it's going to be straight across on the back panel. When we get to the front panel, you'll see where I make that concave. If you make that straight, as I have found, if the front panel is actually straight, it looks like it dips well below uh, the front of the gun. We don't want it to do that. Make a registration line, a consistent line is going to go across the front and the back panels. The slots and the area around the slots are going to be identical because they're going to mate together. Now I'm going to move this out a little bit wider. That's what's going to make a pocket in the holster. You'll notice I take a little bit of time trying to figure out, kind of guess, this is where that art meets science comes together. And over time I've kind of come up with a top profile that works for me with most guns and you'll see that muzzle end is kind of concave uh, that's so it will look straight when I put it together I've transferred the uh, stitching lines onto what is now the front panel of this holster not as many straight lines on this front portion the ones that are generally pretty short but I'm gonna mark those out trace that out cut it out and mark those stitching lines. Those are the ones I'm going to use. Punch out the slots. The slots themselves really become the registration mark in the process of making the holster. It's the slots that are going to need to match up. You'll notice too that I marked right on both halves of this pattern. I designed the left side, but I want to cut the right side. Uh, most of my patterns are built to be right-handed. If you want left-handed, flip them over uh, and cut them out left-handed. But I want to be distinct in marking that this is in fact the right-hand side. And you'll see this one, that's the left-hand side. When I take out my Latigo scrap leather, 
Um, you'll notice I remember to turn that over. It wouldn't be catastrophic if I cut this out left-handed, but um, I want to be, you know, develop good habits and I pull that out. I mark the stitching lines. I'm never going to use those, especially on this uh, sketch holster. I do mark the slots. I am going to use those. Mark out the front side. Mark out my stitching lines, my slots. And then we're going to go to cutting that out. I don't line these. This is just a sketch holster. This again is a three-dimensional uh, representation of what I'm going to be doing with this holster. And I want to see how it's going to fit in that gun. Again, the straight, straight lines with a straight edge, put a nice edge on that leather. Up here on the table, on the quartz, I'm going to cut uh, with the cutting board and the uh, utility knife. I'm going to cut all my straight edges, but all the curved, all the organic edges, I'm going to take over on the other side of the shop, and we'll go there in a minute. You'll see that little trip that we get to take. And getting the back side, all the straight edges on that back side. And get ready, we're going to head over to the other side here. And there we are. I buy this leather by the bundle. I think they sell it by the pound. I don't really know what I'm getting till I get home, but it's cheap and it's an easy way uh, for me to uh, take a look at what I'm designing as I'm designing. At the shop that I go to, it's actually a muzzle loading shop. They do a lot of uh, early American crafts and have a lot of leather working stuff kind of off to the side. So it's good to uh, pick stuff up there. Here I am cutting out all those curved edges, those organic edges uh, off of the holster. That goes fairly quick. Uh, this uh, slightly thinner latigo cuts pretty easy. Head back over to the cutting board. Get the pound of board out. After I take these edges off, we'll put the slots in. Even though this is a sketch holster, I do want to be precise in where I put the slots, where I put the stitching lines, because that's where that's going to fit on that final holster. I want to make sure that fits. And we'll head over to the sewing machine after I put the stitching lines in. I only mark those on the front. I don't even need to look at them on the back. I don't need to know where the stitching begins and ends on the back because uh, I'm not even going to look at that uh, when I'm doing the stitching here. doesn't matter what color thread I have in. I do like the white on black. It's easy to see. Uh, it's good for the video here, but uh, whatever thread I have in, uh, we're just going to uh, go with that. I start on the trigger guard side of the holster, uh, whether it's here or on the finished holsters because that's where all the turns are, or most of the turns. It's a little harder to uh, tent that leather up uh, against a more complex stitching line. So I do the back side first. Now even though it doesn't affect the pocket that the gun's going to sit in, I do the complete stitches on this sketch holster because I want to know that I have left enough backside behind that slot uh, to work with. Uh, it's not going to get bound up in the presser feed or it's not going to turn uh, when I'm stitching it. So I'll run the whole thing. I'll even do a lock stitch at the end. Just good practice. It's a good habit to get into uh, to overrun about three or four stitches. Get that lock stitch in so that that fits. Don't worry about the clean trimming. Now, I don't glue this. Normally on the finish holster, I'm gluing this together so it fits nice, um, fits well, and stays solid. But if you'll notice, because those two panels are different sizes, they're kind of pulling away from each other. They don't want to line up and stay lined up. Uh, that Latigo leather is very elastic. So if you can tell right here, I have a death grip on that holster. Until I get around that second turn, uh, now it's going to hold itself together. Just make sure that those edges line up where I want them to. Keep that tinted up on the pocket side. 
those edges line up so I know that that's how it's going to fit. Get the sight rail stitched in and back around do a couple lock stitches and then we're going to see what we got. Right here at this point I want to make sure that the front panel and the back panel diverge and move away from each other the way I want them to. I don't want too much overlap, I don't want it falling short uh, and this one fit really well. Take out the mold gun, put it in, see how that fits. The front panel here kind of rides up on the fingers a little bit on that grip presentation. So I'm going to trim a little bit off that front and I'm going to mark that. And you'll also notice on the back panel the sweat guard uh, has a lot of leather that comes up quite a ways. That's going to start bending or getting in the way. Uh, we don't need any more on the sweat guard other than to protect ourselves and the gun. Beyond that, uh, it just gets in the way. So I'm going to trim a little bit off that sweat guard. I'll mark that on the sketch holster. Take a look at that. Yeah, that's right. Feels good. Now you'll notice, uh, I also want to check to make sure there's a little bit of a bend uh, arc on the back side so that it fits around the waist well. That did work out well. And some of that can be adjusted when you make the final holster, but uh, for the most part, I want to see it starting to do that. So here I am trimming off. Always easier to trim off uh, excess material than it is to add material, whether it's the pattern or obviously the final holster. Um, better to have a little extra, trim it off. You don't have to start over, which has happened. Then I kind of eyeball up here where I want that to be based on the sketch holster. Trim off that sweat guard. Put some radius on. I even draw those in before I cut them. I want to make sure uh, what I'm cutting looks good. Again, you start with a good pattern, everything will follow. You start with a bad pattern, you'll never catch up. So we got the patterns made. Now I have the sketch holster. I'm going to mark that. You can't really see it on the video. I'm going to use a black marker. Um, you can't really see it on the video, but when I put it away, I can see what's on there. I do save these. I have over 200 sketch holsters in a box under the bench. Um, if I need to refer to them, I can do that. Uh, pull those out, see how a similar gun might fit in the holster I've already designed. So, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, like the video, check me out on Facebook. I got a lot of photos and things there that you can refer to, and you can contact me through that. So, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Enjoy the video. I'll talk to you later.